Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and welcome to the first video of August. Although, I technically did upload yesterday, but when I filmed it, it was still July. So, last video I did was inspired by a Miss Mojo video. It was top 10 relationships, or I guess, couples in DreamWorks today. It's a little different. I'm still doing a top 10 video, although technically it's top 20. And it is top 20 relationships in DreamWorks movies between two or more people. And these are not romantic relationships. They are other relationships like friends or siblings or groups of people. So coming in at number 20 is Snow Loud and Fish Legs. This is an interesting relationship because there's both so different fish legs respects dragons and people and doesn't and believes there's good in everyone and is always trying to be nice to Snot Loud and is always and is super smart whereas Snot Loud is a jerk and a bit of an a-hole at times but somehow they still manage to get along they're kind of like brothers but they're not brothers you know they have that just that sometimes it seems like they are brothers but they're not Coming in at number 19 is Rough and Tough. I wish these guys were higher. I'm actually sad I didn't put them higher. But there are a few that are better than them because they are twins, so they're always together. And even though it seems like they don't really care about each other, there are times like when Tevna thinks he's been bit by the leg, you mean that um, Refna tries to find the solution so that he doesn't turn into a dragon. And then when she realizes that even if he does turn into a dragon, she still wants to be his sister. And even though they do, like, they hate each other all the time and they hate each other with weapons and they fight almost all the time, it doesn't seem like a typical sibling relationship, but it is. Coming in at number 18 is another sibling duo, Vigo and Riker. Now this is a strange one, partially because Vigo is the younger brother and Riker is the older brother, and Riker usually follows Vigo's every move. But it's what uh, Riker said to Dagger in... Night... no, what's that episode called? I can't think of the episode name. He says to, because you know, Dagger says to Riker, don't you ever just want to, you know, take over and become leader? He's like, well, yes, but Vigo is my brother, you know, so he's my brother, so I I listen to his every word. He's my brother, so. And I like that even though they don't seem like siblings, you know, how Riker seems to not like that he's his younger brother is in power over him they still are brothers next come up with another sibling duo we have but uh, i realized my top numbers 19 to 16 are all sibling relationships wow how did i manage that so number 17 is moses and Ramesses. even though they aren't well they are technically siblings they're they were adopted siblings. Just the fact that mm, Mo Moses is always getting into trouble and Ramesses always gets blamed for it, but Moses always gets him out of it. And when Ramesses and Moses meet again after years and he's Pharaoh, he says, In my heart, you're my brother, but that doesn't change who we are now. I guess I think he does say that. I need to watch Prince of Egypt again. And just the fact that Ramesses, even though it was his brother, was somehow not when he lets people go. Even in the song, that song, he's like, Once I called you brother, so he doesn't call him brother anymore. Coming I mean, at number 16 is Heather and Dagger. This never seemed like it would be a typical sibling relationship just because Heather hated Dagger for destroying her village and her adoptive parents. She was even willing to kill Dagger until she found out that he was her brother. 
Then she joined the Dragon Riders to overthrow Dagger and Vigo. But somehow, I think it's because of what Riker said to Dagger, Dagger let Heather go and got expended because of it. I'm not even sure if that's a word. And never gave up searching for her, even though she did not want to be found by him and didn't want anything to do with him. Eventually, though, they end up rebuilding Berserker Island together and ruling as chief and chief divis, chief and chief dis till who knows when. Coming in at number 15 is Jack and Bunny Mun. This is a really weird relationship because Bunny is the Easter Bunny. Jack made it snow on Easter a while back, so now they hate each other. But somehow when Jamie start almost starts doubting that the Easter Bunny is real, Jack tells him that he is real. And of course Bunny by this time is like you did that for me. You told him that I was real. So they hate each other, but they also love each other, in a way. Number 14 is Stoic and Tornado and Skull Crusher. Because Stoic and Tornado, that was a good relationship. You know, he found a dragon. He was willing to train it the way he knew. But then he ended up warming up to way Hiccup trained him. And they were unstoppable together. Until he had to let Tornado go because of the juvenile Thunderdomes. If you haven't seen uh, Defenders of Earth, it's one of the last episodes in the series. But then he meets Skull Crusher, who is exactly like him in a way. And Skull Crusher, of course, was willing to go with Eret after Stoic's death, and Skull Crusher was even willing to let Eret ride him. So Skullcrusher obviously warmed up to Eret, but he probably will never forget Stoic. Number 13 is Valka and Hiccup. To say, now this is actually a better relationship than I expected. I mean, Valka was absent from Hiccup's life for 20 years, so he has a right to not want to have a relationship with her. But once he realizes that's his mother, he kind of is like, you can't say stuff like that. Like, you can't say you're my mother and just walk away. But then he realizes that she is exactly like him and he took after her. And they are pretty much the same. And he wants her to come back and be his mother. Of course, then Stoic dies and I think she actually does join them. Which... And even in the third movie, you know, she is there for Hiccup. Even though he is chief, you think she would, I guess, decide Hiccup should be chief. And technically, she wasn't there for 20 years, so I guess it makes sense. Number 12, Sto um, Spirit and Little Creek. This is a weird one because um, Little Creek somehow saves... Spirit, but then again, Spirit doesn't really want to warm up to Little Creek because he's a wild horse. He doesn't know how to open up to humans. But by the end, Little Creek saves him several times, warms up to him, and even lets him ride him at the end. But Little Creek is willing to let his own horse, Rain, go and be with Spirit. And I just like the fact that Spirit was somehow able to trust Little Creek enough to let him ride him, even though he is a wild horse. Coming in at number 11 is Wolf and Snake from DreamWorks' new movie, The Bad Guys. Wolf and Snake are best friends, and even, and they wrote back on Snake's birthday, but Snake is used to being bad, so much so that when the wolf turns good, or tries to turn good, Snake continues to be bad until he feels the wag. Coming in at number 10, so we're getting into the top 10, is Stoic and Gobber. Stoic and Gobber, um, interesting relationship, partially because Gobber is not afraid to tell Stoic when he is wrong. He's also not afraid to tell him when he is wrong about Hiccup. He is also not afraid 
to deny the chief's orders or take blame for things that Hiccup sometimes does that Gobbler was a part of. But Gobbler is also always willing to fight by his side. In the first movie, Stoic wants to distract the Red Death so that they can give the word some time. And Gobbler says, I can double that time. So, they're always willing to fight by each other's side. But Gobbler is also not afraid to tell Stoic when he is wrong. Coming in number nine, Vigo and Hiccup. This is a constant game of cat and mouse between these two. Stoic, Vigo is always, seems to know Hiccup's every move, and Hiccup always sometimes will hit Vigo with an unexpected move, but not often. Then we come to Triple Cross, when Vigo realizes what Hiccup believes about dragons and what Hiccup believes about dragons is right about dragons and he is actually willing to sacrifice himself for Hiccup. Coming in at number eight is Astrid and Heather. So this is actually a pretty relationship I actually did a video on Astrid and Heather. Um so when Heather came to the first came into Hatch and Dragon, Astrid didn't like her much because she didn't trust her. She felt like there was probably something going on there and she was right. But somehow they bonded over that. And when she comes back and races to the edge, Heather and Asher become friends. And I think it's appropriate that they did this because Asher is technically the only girl on Dragon's Edge. Yes, Roughnut is female. But she's always hanging around with Toughnut and acts like a guy at several times. So, and even though Asher is a warrior and a tough girl, she does need some. A female companion sometimes and Heather is that female companion for her. She's also willing to trust Heather to go as a spy from the inside for Dragon Marriage and not tell Hiccup because she knows Hiccup will want to pull Heather out of it but then again he does but she doesn't want to tell Hiccup. Coming in at number seven is Joseph and Potiphar. This is actually a pretty good relationship because Potiphar ends up trusting Joseph so much that he allows him to become head of all his household until he is falsely accused of some unconventional things that I am not going to mention. But eventually, Potiphar, when Pharaoh asks Potiphar if he trusts Joseph, he says, with my life. I think he says, I know I said something else. Potiphar trusts Joseph enough, even though he was falsely accused. And I think after a while, Potiphar finally realized that. Coming in at number seven is the bad guys. All how many are there? There's like Tarantula, Shark, Piranha, Snake. There's five of them. Why is there always five? Too much just like fives. So these guys, they are they're bad guys and when Wolf decides to become good, they are kind of way, but then they feel the wag and they're like, you know what, let's become good, all except for Snake. But I'm not going to get into that because that is spoiling and I'm trying not to spoil things anymore. Go watch it, it's a good movie. Coming in at number five, now I said there weren't going to be any romantic relationships on here, I lied. Fox and Wolf. I'm including them on you because I forgot to include them on my top 10 relationships and I feel bad about it. But Fox and Wolf is different because Fox believes Fox believes that there is some good in the bad guys. They just don't want to be good or they don't know where to put that goodness. But she also has a secret and a dark past. She has a secret and a past that helps Wolf take down um, the guinea pig professor something, I don't remember his name. Coming in number four is the Guardians. They all seem to have this relationship where, well, of course, they all have the same goal of protecting the children from pitch. Oh, no! From pitch and other 
things that threaten the children's belief in Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and things like that. They're also willing to accept Jack right away, even though he doesn't really accept them till like the end of the movie or the middle, I guess. I mean, I know three is the Dragon Riders. This relationship. From what I've noticed from Race to the Edge, it's all mostly like a family, technically. Hiccup and Ash would be the parents, everyone else would be the kids, because they always seem to be trying to keep them in line. And they do fight in Bickers and Highs, but at the end of the day, they're always there to fight by one another's side. Coming in at number two is Jack and Jamie. I love this relationship because Jamie never stops believing. He does doubt for a bit, but he never stops believing. He's also the first one to actually see... Jack. And of course, Jack had a sister before he was a guardian. And I think Jamie gave him a second chance to be a brother again. Coming in at number one is Hiccup and Toothless. What more can I say? This is a perfect relationship. Okay, I won't say perfect because not all relationships are perfect. But. Hiccup and Toothless have a pretty good relationship. And as he says in Raya Shasperinsburg, you save me, I save you. But Hiccup was also willing to let Toothless go into the hidden world, be with the light fury, because he, like he said, I was so focused on what I wanted. I didn't think about what you needed. He was willing to let Toothless go and move on with his life, even after everything they'd been through. So that's going to this video. Be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Stay tuned for the next video on the 8th of August. Alright, see you.